Welcome to Reconnect with Plant Wisdom. I'm your host, Tigrila Gardenia, nature-inspired mentor and leadership coach. In this podcast, I share ancient and modern knowledge from biology to spirituality about the wondrous ways in which plants can help you lead a naturally conscious life. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 29 of Reconnect with Plant Wisdom. Here, I want to tell you about two important lessons from my business partner, Spider Plant. If you're watching on the video, you actually can see Spider Plant. This is my business partner, Spider Plant. And it is not a Spider Plant. It is just Spider Plant. When I first started working with Spider Plant, I asked Spider Plant what name or how to call Key. And uh, I was just told Spider Plant which was interesting because I actually first, because I live in Italy and because um, I first started working with spider plant in Italy, obviously, I thought I was going to call spider plant by spider plant Italian name, which is Chlorophyto, because the scientific name is Chlorophytum comosum. 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 Yeah. So, um, but no, spider plant was very adamant. That was like, my name is spider plant and it's spider with a capital S space plant with a lower P. So two words, spider plants. And spider plant as a, as a species originates from Africa, um, where actually usually found under in mountainous regions, kind of under uh, in the undergrowth and near rivers and bushes. So lots of water and lots of shade and other aspects of it. This particular spider plant, uh, spider plant actually comes from Sicily. It was, he was brought to Northern Italy from, uh, by a friend's mother who then gave it to a woman I used to live with who had a slight obsession with propagating uh, spider plants. And so spider plant had had lots of babies that were all over the place. And um, one day I scooped up all the babies because they were in very inappropriate. This is one of those cases of a person who really claims to love plants and she really does love them intellectually. She loves kin all over the place, but the care part and the idea of, you know, the aftercare, mm, little difficult for her. So I scooped up uh, a lot of these babies and started to put them into planters together. And so actually in my house, there are various spider plants, but this is the only one whose name is spider plants. And this is the only one that I work with in business. So um, what makes a spider plant really unique is the ability to create all these tiny little what they call spiders, which in reality, from a technical perspective, are called offsets. And these are really little ready-made plants with complete roots that have, you know, flower stem assorted branches, hence why sometimes they are a little too easy to propagate. So key gets propagated a lot and key, unfortunately, gets killed a lot, which but not you, not you, spider plant, not you. So, but I wanted to bring you, so I've been working with spider plant pretty much as a business partner since 2018. It's been a long time and, um, and it's been a really wild ride because I never would have expected that my business partner would be a plant. But the first time I went to put together kind of a mini program, um, spider plant sort of jumped up. I mean, okay, I know that that's, that's an anthropomorphic expression, but I couldn't think of another way. Basically, a uh, spider plant alerted me that spider want, wanted to be a part of this discussion. And it was quite fun and interesting to start this whole process with spider plant. Like we, um, I sat there, I entered into communication and, you know, meditation to get the first ideas. Then I started to put things down. And then I would always bring spider plant into my workspace where I was doing things and ask for feedback and opinions. It was really an interesting experience. And since then, um, spider plant has been an integral part of my business. I call on spider plant to um, help me when I am working on my strategy or when I'm planning new projects. And, and this is what brings me to the first of the two main important lessons that I've learned from spider plant that I want to share with you. The first one is connected to spider plants physiology in some ways. It was something that I realized um, I realized was happening. And then when I went back to think about why it could be happening, it was very much connected to physiology. And it was, I'll, I'll put it this way. This is the best term I could think of it. Be a source of positive air. 
if that's one way to think about it, be a source of positive air. And what do I mean? So we know that studies have shown that spider plants in general, general spider plants are quite effective at cleaning indoor air. So they absorb chemicals, kin can absorb things like formaldehyde or xylene or benzene and even carbon monoxide in homes and offices. Mind you, let's be honest, right? The NASA clean air study suggests that these types of plants, that, that spider plants and a few others are really great at removing these toxins. You have to have a lot of them in the house for it to have a very substantial kind of physiological response. To clean up a lot of those toxins, you need to have a large amount. And while there are lots of them here with me, not probably enough for it to be completely substantial should I kind of pump the air filled with these types of toxins, but a very good amount in order to help me with my kind of every day. But more than that, what I found working with spider plant was that Spider plant is actually a source of positive air in other aspects as well. So extrapolating that idea of if you're in an environment that is polluted, what are the things that I could take out of the air in order to clean up that pollution? And this really is connected to your mental thoughts and the way that you talk about others and the way that you experience kind of group settings and such. Where is it that I can absorb those types of chemicals? What is the safe levels for me to keep a positive environment? So when I end up in a toxic relationship or a toxic situation or something where I find myself with a lot of toxicity, I try to invoke spider plant and really come into the aspect of how am I going to be a positive source for the air? How do, what do I absorb? What do I clean out in other ways? What can I filter? So I would say there is this use of the term absorbing these types of chemicals, but in reality, what's happening is that spider plant is filtering these. Spider plant has the ability in their body to be able to take in these, what are to us toxic chemicals and then transform them into something else. And this is exactly what spider plant has helped me and my business understand that part of my role is to help filter filter through and create a positive environment. So for example, the naturally conscious community is a safe, positive environment for processing through what could be the toxins that people are experiencing in their relationship with plants to the outside world, right? So when we think about things like, you know, uh, eco depression or, or, you know, climate change fears or aspects of seeing really bad treatment of plants and, and not knowing what to do and how that translates into your own life in the sense of your own situations around your creativity, your lack of, your feeling stuck, you're having too many ideas as a multi-potentialite. All of these aspects, my job, thanks to what Spider Plan has taught me, is really about absorbing in this, but filtering it. So not keeping it for myself, because that makes me filled with toxins. If I keep those toxins in their normal way of being, in their, their um, original source, then when I bring those into my body, all I'm doing is making myself filled, you know, I'm filling myself with toxins and I'm potentially making myself sick. Where instead what spider plant does is transform those toxins into nutrition and into source. So what I do is I take in all of that negativity or fear base that is coming from limiting beliefs and conch and um, conditioning and scarcity models and all the things that we've talked about here on the podcast and that we're constantly talking about in the naturally conscious community and help you transform them, help you transmute them, help you bring and work through them. So my job is to bring them into myself process them using that logic of I have the tools inside of me to filter through, take out all the parts that are toxic and find what are the individual components in the case of spider plant, the chemical signatures that can be useful. So I don't eliminate or even negate the fact that this toxicity or this negativity exists. It's much more subtle than that. And that's really something that you can work with plants with to understand the subtlety of how do I pull out nourishment from what appears to be toxic situations or toxic um, thought processes or toxic environments. Within them, there is always truth there is always positivity. There is always um, uh, usefulness and utility. 
but you sometimes have to break things down into their constituent parts, like a molecule that you're disassembling in order to find those nuggets. And my job in reality has been to do that. And this is something that I think, I think it's one of the reasons why Spider Plant wanted to work with me because it feels like it's very connected to both of us. Both of us have this sort of purpose and mission to create that. That's part of our elements. It's part of our deep patterns. It's the way that we operate. And so I am very, very good at taking in something that seems like a horrible situation and again, breaking it down into the formula that it was created from and seeing how each one of those pieces could actually be, if you constitute, if you reassemble them in a new way could actually be extremely useful for you. Something that you can use, something that you could learn from, something that you could do something with. In other words, how do you find that positive uh, utility or that positive usefulness out of what appears to be toxicity? And so especially if you're a healer or if you are working in what feels like a toxic environment, or you yourself, if you're like me, have sort of a bad attitude at times, because I am guilty of having a bad attitude and being judgmental and all these different terms that many of us have thought of as negative. But in reality, if we were to break those down, we could probably find where maybe a fear is distorting a, 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 an actual discernment or an understanding or some vision that is extremely useful. And that if I just move that fear over and figure out where the fear is coming from and kind of break down the fear so that it can be sent over to the decomposers, so it could be actually trans, you know, completely decomposed by some other entity, I could then leave all of these elements, these chemicals that are quite useful, these concepts or terms or skills or talents that are quite useful. And then I can really bring that in. So really being a positive, a source of positive air is something that means taking it in. Don't pretend it doesn't exist. Taking it in, breaking it down, transmuting what you can, letting go of what is like, you know, that needs to move over just to decomposers and then reassembling it into some kind of substance that can be used in a positive direction. And I'm absolutely positive that they exists in there. So that was an important lesson that it, it took me a while to realize, but that was part of what spider plant was doing every time we would work on a project and I would get stuck or I was, you know, if I'm creating something and I feel like I'm trying to take in what feels like toxicity or difficult situations or challenges or issues. And then I focus on that lesson. And I think, how do I turn this into positive, you know, airspace? How do I clean the air in order to be able to address the really core issues and get you to the outcome that you want to achieve. But before I give you part two, the second most important lesson I've learned from Spider Plant, I want to take a moment to share with you one of our eco-conscious business partners. The first time I connected with a plant and actually received a response, I got chills. It is such an invigorating sensation when you break through like that and realize just how connected we are and that we are nature. As a nature-inspired mentor myself, I was super excited to stumble upon the SHIFT network and its mission to empower a global network of evolutionary change agents. Talk about my kind of movement. There are so many inspiring thought leaders, um, healers, empaths and other visionaries all under one roof, each with an individual and collective mission to help you reawaken and co-create a just and prosperous world. Now check out the show notes, click on the link and learn more about the shift network. Consider enrolling even in a course or two. They are the perfect complement to your evolving naturally conscious life. I hope you enjoy what you find in the shift network and come back to the naturally conscious community and let us know all about what you're learning and exploring. Okay. So the second most important lesson I have learned from working with spider plant is going to sound a little banal, but I'm going to tell you the story and then you can understand. Okay. 
when, so I have been working with the music of the plants for many years. If none of you have ever heard of the music of the plants, the music of the plants is a device that allows you to listen to plants. In other words, to allows, it's kind of a musical instrument for plants. That's the synthesis. Um, and I'll put some, some information about the music of the plants into the show notes for you to go find out more. But the point being is that way before many years ago, I actually was a healer. I used to do DNA activations and I did other forms of healings and, and purifications and cleanings and lots of different aspects of that. But it was something that I had kind of put aside when I started to work more closely with plants as more of a coach and a presenter and helping creatives um, discover their different passions and really move into other areas like that. And, but, I always have felt that, especially when it came to plant music, that the healing aspects were just so powerful and I wanted to figure out how to share it. So as my role became more facilitator, speaker, um, and um, consultant, I uh, was looking at projects that were connected to the music of the plants. And one of the things that I was working on was this study, this research study, this research study into the effects of plant music on human health. I gathered up a grouping of, of medical doctors and researchers, and we put together a protocol in order to create something that was standardized that we could test and we could hopefully replicate based on the results. And I was working with a plant at that time that was connected to the clinic that I used to, that we were carrying out this study. So it was a medical clinic. So it was a plant that was very connected to the doctor that was the main doctor I was working with for this study. And, you know, I had stopped, I had started to do plant music healing sessions, but really more as a taster, I would do them in clinics or I would do them in centers. I would do them in places where healings would take place. And I would work with the plants of the area because the plants of that location most likely had a relationship with healing of some sort. So when I would arrive at a location, I would look and I would, I would ask which plant wanted to work with me on this. And I would do that. And it was really more to help educate the healers on what were the possibilities, how could the healers incorporate plant music healing into the work that they did? And then COVID hit. <laughs> and when COVID hit, I was thinking to myself, how am I supposed to be the positive air, right? How am I supposed to take this, especially when we went into lockdown? And I was with Spider Plant, and one day Spider Plant asked me to create a live stream. Now, I'm not a huge live streamer. I live stream here and there occasionally, and um, it, it wasn't my preferred method. And But what Spider Plant asked me to do was not for me to live stream, was to set it up so that Key could live stream. Key wanted to live stream music, play music for the people that would help them through COVID. And so I ended up connecting um, you know, spider plant to a Facebook live. And I just let that live run for as long as spider plant wanted to run as a healing session. The idea that anybody could connect to and could listen to this music and it was calming and it had many different effects that spider plant had chosen specifically for the pandemic, the beginning of the pandemic and the fear that was starting to rise with people. And then later on, um, spider plant also asked me to continue to, to do this when even there was a, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but there was a track that was put out that was like the music of the COVID virus. And when Spider Plant heard that, immediately wanted to create a live stream listening to that music so that, you know, could create medicine specifically, could create music that was specifically to help people with that strain of the virus. So it was, it was a fascinating period. And really I asked, you know, when all of this was over, over, as this was going on and then we started to move forward and things started to change and more information was happening with COVID, Spider Plant said that they that he wanted to continue to do plant music healing sessions. Now, offering healing sessions was not something that was like on my tick list, right? It wasn't like something of service that I was thinking of offering. And it took us a little while to figure out the right protocol. But basically, I pulled into the protocol that we had worked for my medical study. So here we had this plant music healing you know, um, the effects of, of, of plant music on human health study. I had a protocol that had been the product of speaking with many different healers that work with the music of the plants. And it had been tested, scientifically tested in the area that we were working on. Unfortunately, we were never able to finish analyzing all of our results because COVID took away all of our doctors, but um, but it was a, it was something that we definitely did work on. So what we did was I asked Spider Plant what, he wanted to do and key helped me reshape 
the um, reshape what we were working on and and to actually create a protocol that I could replicate through long distance communication. I stopped doing presentations with other plants in other locations, and I only work now with spider plant, but for one main reason. Because spider plant, what spider plant told me and taught me was focus on your purpose. For spider plant, all of this work that we've done, the work that does as my business partner and the work that is, you know, as the healing is all the same. It is about helping people. That is Key's life purpose. Key lives inside of a home for that reason. Key's job is to purify a person, to help a person find that healing, find that clean space, find that clean air. And for Key, the plant music healing is the creative way that Key does it. And Spider Plant uses the more logical way by working directly with me. So there's the two prong approach that we're working on. So this was a really important lesson of focus on your whys, focus on your person and whatever you need to create will come from there. So when I created, for example, reconnect with the plant kingdom, when I created the mini voyage with spirit wild plants, when I created the plant music healings um, protocols, these are all I, I just used I, when we created all of these was really spider plant sharing with me spider plants mission and working with me. So this was a really important lesson in focus on your whys, focus on your life purpose. And from there, you will understand how things to get come together. So for example, when spider plant and I were working on and we created reconnect with the plant kingdom, when we created the mini voyages with your spirit wild plant, when we created um, all these different programs that are inside the naturally conscious community, all of them had the same overall element or archetype or mission. From the perspective of spider plant, it was that element of purifying the air, of taking in what were fears and concerns and um, limiting beliefs and all these different aspects and bringing out the individual elements that were that are positive and useful and the talents and the skills that are that are in there, kind of like what you find when you do kickstart your conscious revolution. And up the, the other side of it for spider plant was the particular healing, which is why we continue to do plant music healing experiences. And from my perspective, it is the being the bridge. So in this case, we have one part of it that is a mission that we both believe in. Both of us have this life purpose connected to purifying and breaking down and finding the usefulness and then there's the other part of by focusing on our individual purposes, in this case, spider plant, the healing and mine, which is being a bridge and helping people reach things that they need. We work together and continue to offer plant music healing sessions. And this was just to me mind boggling because it, it, it hadn't occurred to me which of course makes sense, right? You know, each one of us as human beings, if you believe in reincarnation, you probably had lives not just a life, but lives as plants. And so therefore, of course, you had a life purpose. You had your soul mission that you've been working on. And so that purpose is extremely important. And so spider plant, of course, has a purpose. And this is part of spider plant's purpose. And I learned that when that whole COVID thing hit. Had that COVID thing not hit, I wouldn't have understood why spider plant wanted to be in my office, why spider plant was working with me on all these other projects, why spider plant was so adamant about being that healing force when the pandemic hit using the music of the plants. So this reminds me of one of my favorite quotes that comes directly from Spider Plant. Okay. This was a quote that Spider Plant taught me a long time ago. It says, you need to listen with a desire to hear in order to receive the answer. And for me, it is a reminder of the importance of truly listening to the whys, to the values, to the purposes, to being open that the application is going to come in many different ways. But what is most important is that you're focusing on the purpose, not listening for the answer I want or how I want to do it or what it's going to look like based on some preconceived notion, but to be fully open to listening means to listen to the why behind it to and letting the how develop from there. 
basically stop looking for the answers that you really want and open yourself to receive the answer that you need in this moment. So that's, that's, those are the two important lessons that I've learned from spider plants. So I'd love to hear if there are any lessons that you've learned from your house plants. Now that you sit back and think about the relationship you have with the house plants in your home in particular, of course, or any plant around, is there any opportunity where that plant has been communicating with you, sharing with you something important and that there's some important kind of life lessons that you have learned and hadn't really realized it up until now? I'd love to hear about them. So you can leave me a comment or you can, better yet, join us in the Naturally Conscious community and share your thoughts there. This is the number one ecosystem to explore these ways of being, living and working with plants and the plant kin home. And so I really want to hear what your experience and what takeaways you have from these two lessons. How do you feel about what spider plant has shared with me and what we now are sharing with you? I keep pointing at steroid spider plant because spider plant is here, even though spider plant's a little low and some of you are listening, so you can't hear, but trust me, spider plant is here and sharing with you. So until next time, both of us want to remind you to resist the urge to hold back your evolving green brilliance. I will see you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Reconnect with Plant Wisdom. Intro and outro music by Steve Shuley and Poinsettia from The Singing Life of Plants. So join me, Tigrila Gardenia, and my plant collaborators next time on Reconnect with Plant Wisdom.